Following the liberation of Dachau concentration camp, there were a series of executions of former guards of the first concentration camp carried out by American soldiers. The Dachau liberation reprisals, as they were known, were a series of shootings and beatings administered by American forces and former prisoners of the camp to inflict some payback for the suffering they had experienced. Dachau as a camp was synonymous with torture, with devices such as the flogging posts where inmates would be whipped constantly, and there were even oubliette-style torture cells, tiny dungeons, in which prisoners would be locked in the standing cell in one position for days on end. The former prisoners would slaughter a number of guards following the liberation, and many were beaten to a pulp, along with former functionaries and carpos, employed by the SS to inflict more pain. But even the most senior guard of Dachau, and the final commandant of the camp, would not escape. Join us today as we look at the execution of the final commandant of Dachau, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Heinrich Vicker was born on the 30th of June 1921, inside of Baden-Württemberg, meaning that as the Second World War broke out, he was just a young man in his teenage years. But on the 9th of September 1933, Vicker became a member of the Hitler Youth. Inside of this, millions of boys were trained how to one day be a member of the armed forces, and they were schooled in how to become soldiers. They would learn how to fire weapons and would be trained in military drill, and the purpose of this was that in a few years, when the war broke out, Hitler would have a devoted young force who would lay their lives down for his Nazi regime. But before his 16th birthday, Heinrich Vicker joined the SS Totenkopf Verband, or the Death's Head Unit, and these men would be the staff of the concentration camps during the Second World War. Vicker was an incredibly young man to join this brutal group, and it shows how he must have been devoted to the Nazis and Hitler. But in November 1938, he was stationed inside of Dachau, the first concentration camp that would be opened, and many young men were sent here to train in how to become guards inside of the camps. But as the Second World War broke out, Vicker, like many men, were part of the Waffen SS, the armed force battalions of the SS, and he would be present during many of the early invasions of European countries. He was present during the German invasion of the Netherlands, Belgium and France, but would be transferred like many other soldiers when Hitler prepared to launch his invasion into the Soviet Union with Operation Barbarossa. Heinrich Vicker was still in his early 20s when he was fighting in the thickest presses of the Second World War, and during the Battle of Demyansk he was seriously wounded and then was moved away from the front lines to recover. He did get better, and then he was now not considered fit enough for service in the SS on the front lines of the Eastern Front, and because of this other roles were found for him. He completed SS leadership courses and was promoted to the rank of Oberscharführer, and he was moved to work in the local headquarters of the SS main economic and administrative office. Further promotions came, but then in 1944 in June, he was transferred to go and work back inside of a concentration camp. This time Heinrich Vicker was working at Natzweiler Struthof inside of French territory, and he would be made the commandant of one of the subcamps there. But whilst here he gained a reputation for being evil, and his treatment of prisoners was shocking, and he was known for his brutality, and he was very feared despite being only around 23 years old. He was obsessed with power, and he was then made the commandant in December 1944 of the Natzweiler Mannheim Sandhofen subcamp. It is most probable that Heinrich Vicker was benefiting from the fact many SS men were being transferred to the front line of the conflict as the Second World War was turning against the Germans, and as a young man who had been injured, he was gaining more power as other SS guards moved out to fight for Hitler's remaining empire. When he was at this subcamp though, he did carry out executions, including the execution of a Polish woman who had been involved in sabotaging work. But at the end of the Second World War, Vicker did lead a number of death marches, forced movements of hundreds or thousands of concentration camp prisoners to sites away from the advancing Soviet and Allied armies, as Heinrich Himmler stated that no prisoner should fall into the hands of the enemy. On these death marches, Vicker and his men would slaughter hundreds of people, including during the Hessenthal death march, where 170 prisoners were killed or they died from the conditions of their march. But there would be one final job for Heinrich Vicker, as on the 28th of April 1945, he was made the final commandant of the first concentration camp Dachau, but within 24 hours, he would be dead. He is remembered as the last commandant, and it was he who on the 29th of April 1945, surrendered Dachau 
to General Henning Linden of the 42nd Infantry Division of the 7th US Army. Heinrich Vicker had been entrusted with the camp, whilst the former Commandant Weiss abandoned it, and under his command were 560 men, many of whom who were Hungarian. When the camp was liberated, the American soldiers discovered 39 railway boxcars containing 2,000 corpses parked on the railway outside the camp. Remains were found scattered everywhere, and there was a horrific stench of decaying corpses and human excrement, as well as a sight of emaciated prisoners who were walking around with very little clothes on. Many of the liberators were sick and distraught by what they saw, and the advancing American soldiers told the SS members to surrender and to give up, but some continued to fire at the Americans. As the liberators moved closer, more bodies were found, and many rooms were found with hundreds of bodies inside. However, there would be a series of executions and reprisals carried out against the former guards, and Heinrich Vicker was caught up in these. A group of around 50 prisoners had been captured and were bundled into an area which had been used as a coal store, and this area was enclosed by a high wall. The Germans were looked over by a machine gun team, and Lieutenant Colonel Felix Sparks left these men to watch over their captives, but as he left them, a soldier shouted, they're trying to get away, and their machine gun fire was heard. A 19-year-old soldier who manned the machine gun had mown down around 12 of the Germans and wounded many more. It was said of this event that, it was a foregoing incident which has given rise to wild claims in various publications that most or all of the German prisoners captured at Dachau were executed. Nothing could be further from the truth. The total number of German guards killed at Dachau during that day most certainly did not exceed 50, with 30 being more probably an accurate figure. The regimental records for this date state that over a thousand German prisoners were brought to the regimental collecting point. Since my task force was leading the regimental attack, almost all prisoners were taken by the task force, including several hundred from Dachau. There were other accounts that alluded to the executions of German guards inside of Dachau, and it was said, some of the Nazis were rounded up and executed along with the guard dogs, near to where the men were shot, and there were more killings as around 25 to 50 guards were also slaughtered by the inmates. It was said, some prisoners swarmed over the wire and grabbed the Americans and lifted them to their shoulders. Other prisoners caught the SS men. The first SS man elbowed one or two of the prisoners out his way, but the courage of the prisoners mounted. They knocked him to the ground, and nobody could see whether they stomped him or what, but he was killed. At times, American guards also turned a blind eye to the killing. But it's clear that Heinrich Vicar was executed at some point, following surrendering the camp as a final photograph was taken of him standing in front of one of the death trains, where there were many bodies inside. He had been ordered to be taken to a place where hundreds of corpses were stuffed into, but recent research has emerged in which a photograph showing a deceased SS German officer at Dachau, which appears to be Heinrich Vicker, shows his horrific ordeal. The officer in question is lying on his back on the floor, and he has been shot, but he also has a very battered and bloody face, leading to the idea that he was either set upon by the prisoners or by the American guards. It's more likely that he was shot by the Americans, who were carrying weapons, but he was one of those who was executed following the liberation of Dachau. There is some debate over this photograph, but he was killed following the liberation, as his wife would receive his war pension. Heinrich Vicar was only 23 years old when he was executed inside of the concentration camp he was given command of for around 24 hours. It was his job to surrender the camp to the Allies, as the former commandant ran off and vacated, but at his disposal were over 500 guards. He was executed by American soldiers or prisoners, who were incredibly eager to inflict revenge and reprisal for their suffering. He was a very young man who had been involved in many crimes against humanity, as he led death marches at the end of the Second World War. But he was a virulent Nazi, who would be responsible for the deaths of many people. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.